Securing B. Call of Duty Infinite Warfare has shown off its multiplayer for the first time, revealing combat rigs, weapon crafting, and new modes, amongst other things. We've played it and are here to tell you the eight most important things to know about Infinite Warfare's multiplayer. Nine if you count the fact that matches do end and aren't actually infinite. It's just the name of the game, apparently. Combat rigs are new to Infinite Warfare and act as your class, essentially. There's Warfighter, an all-rounder closest to the COD heroes of the past, Merc, a defensive class meant for suppressing enemies, Synaptic, a sort of combat Asimo who's into close quarters combat, FTL, a tech-focused class that uses experimental kit, Striker, who's all about the squad support, and Phantom, who's, yes, a sniper and wearing leaves as camo, even though he's going to be doing most of his sniping in space. Typical sniper. Although these rigs change how your character looks, they also determine what traits and payloads you'll have access to when you play. And speaking of traits... Traits are combat rig-specific special perks that are always active, and each rig has three to choose from, although you'll only be able to use one at a time, so you'll have to choose the trait that best suits your playstyle. Example traits include Phantom's Rearguard, which protects you from an initial amount of damage from behind, Synaptic's Combat Burst, which gives you a small boost in speed after each kill, letting you chain kills together as you get faster and faster, and FTL's Perception, which lights up the edges of your screen with a yellow glow whenever an enemy is looking at you, giving you an extra split second to be aware of who's going to shoot you right before they shoot you. Like traits, payloads are specific to combat rigs and they are essentially supers, special abilities that charge as you play well. Each combat rig has three to choose from, one being a special weapon, the other two being abilities. Special weapons include Merc's Steel Dragon, a focused energy beam good for area denial and softening enemies, we were told, although it did a pretty good job of killing me, and Warfighter's Claw, which is a big gun that fires all of the bullets. Hey, he's called Warfighter, he's not a complicated guy. Abilities, on the other hand, encompass a bunch of cool and useful specials that all cater to different playstyles. FTL, for example, has a faster-than-light jump that allows him to instantly teleport himself towards an enemy, setting them up for a CQC kill, or away from an enemy if things suddenly get overwhelming. Best of all, though, is Synaptic's Reaper payload, which turns him into essentially a robot dog, giving you a boost of speed and insta-kill melee attacks for a short, joyful, terrifying period. Look at him go! Friendly drone support is active. Of course, it wouldn't be a new Call of Duty without new and exciting gadgets and gear for you to murder people with, and Infinite Warfare is no exception. There's the Biospike, which is a kind of throwing knife crossed with a dirty bomb in that it can kill enemies if it hits them, plus send out a cloud of damage if it misses, as well as new and fancy grenades such as the Secret Grenade, which seeks out enemies before exploding, the Exploding Drone, which heads in one direction and explodes when you tell it to, and the Black Hole Projector, which sucks in nearby bads, holding them in place and damaging them with a final explosion. There are also new tactical options, such as the Adrenaline Drip, which gives you quick health regen for a short time, a Dome Shield Emitter, and a Personal Radar, which can help if you're defending an objective and don't know which door to look at, i.e. the classic Call of Duty conundrum. All of these are now deployed with the left hand, meaning you can keep your weapon up and even be firing when you use them, if you can manage that many button presses at once. If none of that seems to have the personal touch you crave, then good news, as Infinite Warfare also includes weapon crafting. As you play, you collect salvage, which you can redeem and use to craft prototype weapons that come with built-in gun perks, such as stability, stockpile, which gives you increased ammo, or atomizer strike, which gives you a tactical nuke after 25 kills with that weapon specifically. There are four tiers of weapons, common, rare, legendary, and epic, with the epic variations of weapons having considerable advantages over their common counterparts, such as the ability to highlight low-health enemies, award bonus XP per kill, or just fire seven times at once for when you really need to kill seven people at the same time. That is always the problem I have, Call of Duty, so thanks. Infinite Warfare is set in the future in space, a fact that's reflected in the maps which give you a mix of the familiar and the sci-fi. So far we've seen Breakout, an earthbound mountaintop prison with a mix of open outdoor areas with long sightlines and indoor cell blocks for close encounters. There's Frontier, a space station in orbit around Neptune built for fast engagements. Frost, a research facility on the icy surface of Jupiter's moon Europa with plenty of spots to fall off. And Throwback, which is a 1950s themed theme park set on a torus-shaped space station, which is quite the contrast, let me tell you.
Though all the classic acronym-friendly Call of Duty modes such as TDM, KC, CTF and SAD will be returning, Infinite Warfare also has a couple of new modes, Frontline and Defender. We've yet to see Frontline, but Defender is a violent game of keep away in which you need to grab a small drone that spawns in the centre of the map and then hold onto it for as long as possible while you steadily rack up points. You can throw it like a ball to other teammates and teamwork is essential if you're to protect the drone carrier and stop the other team from getting control of the drone. Also, the drone resets regularly, so there's no taking your ball and going home. Also new to Infinite Warfare are mission teams, COD clubs that you pledge your allegiance to and that offer a whole new layer of progression as you play. Yes, there's still player ranking up and weapon ranking up, but in case that wasn't enough ranking up for you, mission teams let you rank up for a specific team as well, earning unique perks as you do so. Each team has a slightly different focus. For example, the JTF Wolverines, we're told, are all about killing, and each is run by a commander who will deliver you missions and comment on your successes or failures. Completing missions earns you team rank and gives you cool unlocks such as team-specific camos and call signs, new rig customization unlocks, and, most importantly, weapon unlocks. The only way to get certain epic weapons is to do these challenges. We assume there's also a Christmas party, although you might want to skip that if you're in the JTF Wolverines. Got a bit messy last year. The enemy has the bomb. There we go, Call of Duty watchers. Those are the eight crucial things you should know first about multiplayer in Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. We'll have more and very soon, and you can be sure to catch it all by subscribing. Thanks for watching. See you next time.